You're alive, Cornelia. Okay, so thanks, Paul. So, um, welcome everybody to this event, um, Nurturing Poets, eight poets from port cities, Liverpool, A Coruña, and Cork. Um, my name is Cornelia Grebner. I'm going to be taking you through the session and introducing all those wonderful poets who have make it, made the effort to join us today. Um, I should say that this, uh, now, this event is a, co a collaboration with the research project Poetry and Politics 2, which is based at the University of Vigo in Galicia. Um, and I'm here, I'm moderating this because I'm part, I'm one of the researchers on this project. Um, I should also say that this is a follow-on event from our previous event, um, which was a round table um, of three poetry facilitators and organizers, Paul Casey from Ovio, um, Dave Ward from the Windows Project and Yolanda Castaño from a um, variety of, po of um, poetry projects in A Coruña, in Galicia. Um, and so now, after hearing about these projects, we're going to have the opportunity to hear um, some of the, po the poets who have grown, emerged, worked with those projects, um, read. And it's a testament really to the... Um, to the dedication and the devotion um, that the facilitators of this project have um, put into them. And, um, and yeah, it's, so it's a showcase um, for each of these projects. And I should briefly mention them. So there's the Windows Project from Liverpool. The Windows Project exists um, since 1976. Um, it does many different types of community work, among them workshops, um, in schools and in other parts of the community. Um, and um, they also have a mentoring scheme for young poets. Um, so we will first hear three poets who have come out of the Windows Project and who have worked with the Windows Project in the past and in the present. Um, we will then move on to two poets from A Coruña, where Yolanda Castaño has initiated um, the Residencia Mil... 863, so the residence 1863, which is a poetry residence which brings together um, poets and translators and where she also runs a poetry event series called Poetas Sin Versos. And um, so we will hear two poets, Lucia Aldao and Emma Pedreira, who has come, who, have, who are joining us or who have had their trajectory um, in A Coruña. And we will then hear three poets from Cork um, who are associated with the project of Ovio. That will be Julie Gu, George Harding and Molly Tomi. Um, and so we will first start with um, the poets who have come to us through the Windows project um, from Liverpool. Um, and um, those will be Benese Muyange, Natalie Lynn Balderson and Eleanor Rees. Um, we will start with Bene. Um, Bene is a Congolese British spoken word artist. She's an author and designer um, and a performance coach and a creative writing facilitator. And um, she has won several awards and um, prizes and is um, currently, and I think she is still volunteering with the um, with um, with young people as a creative as a creative writing facilitator. And Bene will share with us. Um, some of her poems today. So over to you, Benny. Hello. Um, hi. So the first poem I'm sharing with you is based on uh, police brutality, um, particularly around G George Floyd. It's took, taken me a year to get around to writing there because it was a lot, but I hope you can appreciate it. Thank you. Tell. There's the sound of a shovel or a spade, I cannot tell, coming down. Lifting worm-filled dirt, disrupting earth and muddy ground, uprooting roots, heaving heavy soil, metal on slick black boots, breathing steady, pushing in to turn out, to toss out ashes to ashes. You cannot bury this black. There's a hand 
on a rifle or a pistol, I cannot tell. Angled back, fingers pulling trigger. I told you to get down, nigger. Reciting rights to men already pronounced dead. Souls all spilling out from bullet holes in chest. Spirit gone, departed, left, leaving mothers crying. Cradling photos, he only went out to get cigarettes. You cannot bury this black. There's a man with a badge or a scythe, I cannot tell, making holes of black men, of black women, of black boys, of black earth, so fecund and pitted with bloated black bodies, the grass is always green. When he, like death, has come to collect, taking breaths from throat hard pressed, a crooked knee upon thy neck, you cannot bury this black. So black we've been through ships and the lynching and the burning through the piles of bones and bloodied rope through those shots, through those rounds, through wade in the waters and sharp tooth hounds, through blood spilled on poplar fields or concrete floors or behind prison doors when the head when the night is hell and blonde and white, oppressing and gnashing of sinking teeth, leaving us to fever and ills, to pray to God with flu-like chills, a hefty weight that claws and rips and takes, that cuts and whips and rapes when strength is all but pulled and stretched thin, dragged and pushed and turned in. We always survive the night. We always win we might be tired, but we are never through. You cannot bury this black. Thank you. Um, and uh, that was quite heavy. So um, the next poem I'm going to do is a little bit lighter. Um, my friend went through a breakup a few years ago, and uh, this was to cheer her up. <laughs> um, it's called Food for Thought. There's a sickening feeling right before you throw up. You feel it hot and sticky, a burning mess, like you've eaten too much. But you'd eaten too much. And I was addicted to you like the English to a twining's brew, just eating it up. Breakfast, lunch, and winner, winner, chicken, dinner, or so I thought. Let's not mince words. You're really taking the biscuit, the whole dessert. I don't need a time out. When you're just telling me how my smooth chocolate toffee skin just couldn't cut the taste for you. You wanted something more. You were allergic to Caramac. You wanted something more sophisticated. Banana milkshake, vanilla ice with a slice of apple pie. And you dipped your Cadbury flake into her Milky Way. Hope you like the slice of humble pie. It's already spilled milk, so why are you crying? Don't tell me that I'm your chocolate gato you nibbled her biscuits and got fat so please remove your lips from my cheeks i will no longer be the icing on your cake egg on face it was my mistake i should have known you'd come with a sell by date and there you lay that hot sticky burning mess it's over let me relay this relationship's deflated like a souffle Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> uh, so this next one doesn't have a title. Um, my heart is an empty echoing hall. Phantom phrases of summer linger here to be frostbitten away by a northern cold. Love and hope slipped like false beliefs, like my hand is not a bowl for rays, holding, holding sun, holding water. I prayed for love to come. It did not come and I made my peace with it. I prayed for peace to come. It did not come and I, and I made my peace with it. I am now plastic ball, emptiness condensed in bright surface. Um, and finally, 
the last poem I have for you today is called Morning Walks Along the Cemetery. Morning carried a basket of snakes. The sibilant hissings slithering between sycamores to find themselves tangled in the, the mid-clap of a praising branch. She cares a service, instead hurriedly heaving herself up high hills, sending sparkle specks scurrying behind cerulean who stalks the somber sky. Her pink cheeks flushed and swollen like puffs of roses in full bloom. She has arrived and the sky can no longer feign sleep. Below, colossal giants squat along slate carpets, their myriad eyes reflecting those wearing chrome beetles, workbound now, scuttling along a sequin tarmac neatly stitched with faded paint. Babel towers defy the Hebrew god, Clasping between them are design ornaments dissolving into amber, into emeralds suspended like a makeshift industrial chandelier. Here, the air feels the way sparkling water tastes, all static and alive. Different from beyond the wall, beneath the mottled fell down canopies, planted between ivy limbs where sepulchral stones jort like solemn reminders, stems of silence in a Noah's Ark of noise. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bene. That was wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, and we will um, now um, listen to Natalie Lynn Balderson, who also um, is a poet who has, um, who has come out of the Windows Project. Natalie is a Vietnamese Chinese British um, poet. Um, she has received numerous awards. Um, which I can't list here all, but um, for all the poets, you can go onto the website and see more detailed biographies and listings. Um, she um, is here um, today as, um, war as, as one of the projects who has, as I said, who has come out of the Windows project, as one of the poets who's come out of the Windows project. So Natalie, over to you. Um, thank you so much for having me here. Um, it's an honor to be beside all of um, these wonderful poets today. Um, so since we're all poets who are connected with port cities, um, I thought I'd read my kind of my poems about water and the sea and migration and myth. So um, my first poem is called Fragments of My Mother's Homeland Underwater. Southern Vietnam will be submerged by 2050. Saigonier, October 2019. Every place has a name for this. Here it is Dan Thế. A fortune once told me that rain is worth everything. And so I knew that it held all we had ever burned. Pork skewers, begging letters, Hell money, my great grandmother's remains, her son's prepared flesh. In monsoon season, they, fu they fused with everything we exhaled. Once, Vietnamese people were said to be descended from Ao Ke, a fairy from the mountains, and Lak Long Guan, a dragon from the sea. When their forms touched sand, 100 children climbed out from black eggs. When the land disappeared, we poured our ancestors' ashes into Aquafina bottles, let them live in the ghost of our thirst. Once we planted peach trees for the, planned to chop and sour the fruit in jars. Once, the sun slipped so low that every peach burst on our palms. We stayed out until our hair singed, watched black strands split into dust on the concrete. 
Once, Aoka and Guan, away from home, Guan tried to hold his human shape, but could not stop his tail from growing back. Aoka tried to cut off her wings and bled a typhoon. Once, a river curdled at the memory of splitting, the toxins it was fed bodies of five generations. In the bomb cities, waves pull apart reconstructions of every holy building. My mother does not cry, because she has already lived through this. Because home is swept away every minute you're not there. I hear her voice bend open to red gas, recede into her mother's toothless murmurs, like names heard through snow. When we are afraid, it no longer matters that we never learn to fully understand each other. These days we are meatless. My mother still dreams of a pig fat enough to feed us all for a month, though we have long since lost our talent for slaughter. Once, Guan threatened a flood so that the sea and land might be joined. Alka fled with half her children, taught them to plant Guan in pockets of warm earth. Guan carried away all who remained on his back, and they lived as fishermen. Once, there was nothing to hold on to but the prayers that streaked from my mother's mouth, her belief that I would live longer if oiled and blessed, that when she died, there would be someone left to ask after her bones. Once, we wanted to believe we'd survive the flood, because we were born from a collision of mountain and sea. Because nothing has ever held us as closely as water. Okay, um, my next poem is called Love Poem on the Drive to Redacted Place. Um, and it's based on a story that was told to me by a family member. So, Love Poem on the Drive to Redacted. When she asks, where is left to go? He only says, to water. She fingers the Guan Am statue on the dashboard, the glue-filled crack in the neck, the hands weathered down to cuffs of light. The red tassel charm lashes the mirror as he follows the unpatrolled road. She is pregnant again. She imagines the child the length of her shin bone, its weight as sure as a white flower gourd. He stops the car and touches her stomach. She, he taught her in his first tongue. Okay, uh, this last poem is a little bit different now. Um, it's called Shui Mu, Old Mother of Water. And I think all you need to know is that uh, Shui Mu is a water demon in Chinese mythology, and Guan Yin is the goddess of compassion in Chinese mythology. Shui Mu, old mother of water. Shui Mu as a child. Before I drowned, I bled, carried home river fish, a thin armed girl. Two leaking pails on my shoulders. Shui Mu submerges the city. Flood gathers girl breath. Pours five lakes, waiting in a wooden bucket. At my feet, the lightless temple. Guan Yin rescues the flooded land from Shui Mu. I flee water. Gather lands like small blue gods. In my arms, sounds of living, thrashing in jars. 
Shui Mu is bound to the mountain. My chained stomach, hunger sinning daily by dripping grease into boneless oceans, cracking crab shells into dirty half moons. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Natalie, um, for these very beautiful and thoughtful poems who um, resonate with the theme of rivers that, and fresh air um, that we mentioned in the roundtable debate. Um, we will now move on to Eleanor Rees, who is our last poet from the Windows Project today. Um, Eleanor Rees is a poet who also has um, several publications out there. Um, as with all the poets, you can read the full biography um, with the festival program. And that's, this is also where you can find a list of her publications. Um, Eleanor is a poet who works a lot with um, folklore and myth and metamorphoses, um, which are significant theme in her poetry. She has also been working for the Windows Project for quite a long time, and um, she has said that it's very significant to her work because it has offered her the opportunities to interact um, with communities and that it um, reaffirms for her and has given her the opportunity to um, see the social function of poetry and to see the social um, significance of, of poetry sort of in the actions um, of the Windows project. And I think that's something that's really come through um, with Bene and Natalie as well, how embedded um, your, your poetry is. Right, Eleanor, over to you. Oh, thank you so much, Cornelia. Um, and thank you uh, so much, um, Natalie and Bene, to the beautiful poetry. Um, and I'm going to start by um, I'm reading all new poems. I'm going to start by reading a poem um, which um, also draws on pythology, um, like Nat Natalie. Um, and this is um, Tamlin of the Winter Park. You walk ahead of me, beckoning, disappearing. You open the side of a tree, step through bark to another park, which is a series of rooms laid out on leaf mulch. And on a sofa near a sycamore, you lean on upholstery, smiling, gesturing, opening your arms. Then turn your back as I step into the glade. Muscular branches lean and block my way as I stop to see you, still grinning, still watching, asking, oh, how will you get in? A chimney puffs, bricks are built with gray. I peer in where you, while you stare through a shining window. Come in, you say, come in. But when I place my palm on the handle, I push to air. And you are calling, not unkindly, oh, do come in. As I search in the leaves for a key to solidify walls, to make the barrier more convincing. And the second poem I'm going to read, um, it's also located in the suburbs for no for reasons I'm sure you can all appreciate. I've spent a lot of time outside of the city centre over the last two years. So a lot of the poems seem to be exploring those territories um, more in depth. So this poem is called Peregrine. Falcons by the belfry slide across a square of blue between sandstone tower and spring green trees. Triangular wings fix realities against currents supporting each journey over the twitcher's cameras. Below, feathers lie along the tarmac like the aftermath of a drunken party. And in the porch, a pigeon hunches to warm a nest behind a row of thin steel pins lining a notice board's dark wood rim. Posters invite attendance at the Easter services. And on a sandstone ledge, her mate perches, plump and grey, eyes me, nods, 
I walk in, light widening from gable windows. And like a field of roses in bloom, viewed from a hill across the valley, pigeons line polished pews, each warm body sat close to another. At the altar, no crops, but more feathers, and an egg on a silver platter. The gods of the sky call like a round of thunder, and all the birds ascend. Falcons to the sun, and pigeons to the rafters. As the day outside the window still does not blossom with rain. And I have, have a poem here uh, about the river because um, that feels like that's necessary. Uh, so this poem is called Divination at High Water. Small birds dip on the tide, one instant silver next dark as shadow, and seep into it, disappear again in the glint of sun on the wave. And turning under into the crust of water, taking on edges and then reversing, then flicker, there is no need to carry a narrative high on my shoulders, as the light makes me another story, touching distance huge as the earth's arc. No collapse of form or dissolution, but an alteration, a submission to the sky, and then, for a moment, enlarged as wide as a firmament, my body, a long afternoon of rain, becomes thunder. Thank you. Thank you, Eleanor. And um, with those three, we've um, had a bit of a showcase of the wonderful poets that the Windows Project um, has had under its wings and that have in turn that are keep still contributing to the Windows Project. Um, I'm sure that everyone who has worked for the Windows Project is very pleased and proud now. <laughs> And um, from the city of Liverpool, we are now going to move on to another port city, which is A Coruña um, in Galicia, so the northwestern tip of Spain. And as we've learned earlier, um, A Coruña is a, is a peninsula, um, so it's also surrounded by water. And um, we have two poets with us tonight, Lucia Aldao and um, Emma Pedreira. The... Um, Lucia is going to read first, and um, two of Lucia's poems have been translated for this occasion by Maria del Pilar Cáceres Casillas, who's with us. And so Lucia will read her poem first, and then um, Pilar will read the translation. Now, um, Sofia, um, like uh, sorry, Lucia, like several of the of the poets here tonight, um, is. Um, does poetry in quite varied ways. So she's participated in poetry events um, since adolescence, and she's been then encouraged by the positive response to also delve into music and script writing. And um, she also, together with fellow poet Maria Lado, um, they, she runs a show, the two of them together run kind of a poetry um, and poetry and comedy satire show, show, if I understand correctly. And um, this, um, they publish under the name Aldao Lado. Um, so um, we have a lot of crossover here um, among, among different art forms. And um, with that, I'll pass it over to Lucia. Um, así que Lucia, si quieres empezar a leer. Okay. Muchas gracias por la presentación, Cornelia, y muchísimas gracias a Pilar por las traducciones y las lecturas. Ya sabías que a tristeza improvisa invernos bajo sol más descarado. Estabas avisada do deseo de corazón tanto como de dos glaciares. E no es que te falte un verán, es que te sobra. También es cierto que por la tu edad y e apostas a que siempre va a ser así, te resulta complejo aprender que sí, que todo pasa, tranquila, disto no se morre, maldita exagerada. E dos veces por semana, enamorada crónica, 
Recolles amorodios que medran no peito a golpe de tantán, sulfatas con caricias. Sabes cómo xuntar, vaime deixar por un minotauro. As palabras son anacos de pan que vou soltando entre os poemas para saber volver a min cando esta forza falsa me abandone. Tan débil con B como con V. Vaime deixar por un levantador de pedras. E aí estás, muller de firmes obsesións, que deletreaches o seu corpo dende o punto máis afastado da torpeza. E que, de cunetas, están cheas os talentos. Hai máis. Carteis nos paquetes de tabaco prohibían clarísimamente querer dese xeito e ainda así desexaches sin vaz cos teus ollos e as súas pernas, desexaches matrimonio, quien te ha visto e quien te ve. Non sabías definir improperio da súa man. Escoltan vos cen mil noites sorrindo, pero iso non chega. Quero marchar de aquí. Non, non marches. Hai máis. Claro que marcho. A petición do meu corazón, abandono este poema. Vaime deixar por un búfalo. Búfalo. You already knew that sadness improvises winters under the most insolent sun. You were warned about, about hard thought as much as you were about glaciers. It's not that you lack one summer. It's that you have one to spare. It's also true that because of your age, you bet it's always going to be this way. You find it hard to learn that, yes, everything passes. Take it easy, girl. Nobody dies because of this. Damned drama queen. And twice a week, you chronic lover, pick up love hates growing in the chest to the rhythm of the tom-tom. You fertilize with caresses. You know how to wet rock and roll and countryside. He's going to dump me for a minotaur. Words are bre breadcrumbs that I'm dropping amongst the poems for me to know how to come round when this unreal strength abandons me, as feeble as a pebble. He's going to dump me for a stone lifter. There you are, woman of firm obsessions, who spells her body out from the most distant point from clumsiness. So what of ditches talents are made? Shh, there's more. Warnings on cigarette packets forbade very clearly to love that way. Even though you wanted Sinbad with your eyes and his legs, you wanted Mary. I could see you now. You couldn't define insult by his hand. A hundred thousand smiling nights scored you, but that isn't enough. I want to get out. No, don't go. There's more. Because I'm leaving on my heart's request, I abandon this poem. It's going to dump it for a buffalo. Muchas gracias, Pilar. Over to you, Lucía. Thanks to you. <risa> o silencio e a vergoña son amigos dos meus amigos. Entón fai falla unha machada que aguce estaca, unha vida perdida e a súa reconquista. Abolir o espello dos portais das rúas e dicirse sangrando, os amigos dos meus amigos son os meus inimigos. Nacín aquí. Para definir nacionalismo, apelo o meu corpo. A miña infancia foi exactamente igual que a túa con mil peros e unha guerra crónica que eu remato amando. Ser, parécese moitísimo a figura dunha tarasca que agora adquire forma de poema e dase o recordo por resolto, na medida do posible, porque isto sabe todo o mundo, a vida ten de seda o que de seda ten o sarrio. Pouco máis lle queda unha que asumir que a identidade non veu para quedar ni marchou para marchar. E así, cada canco seu cancro, sucede. Mudouse o monstro. Todo o que eu tiña roubóllelo aos pobres para darllelo aos leóns. Faime a mesma pregunta todos os días. Que se quero ou que se teño? Trans. Silence and shame are friends of my friends. So I'd need an axe to sharpen my cane, my wasted life and its reconquest, to banish my reflection from the glass doors in the streets and to tell myself as I bleed, the friends of my friends are my enemies. I was born here. My body defines my sense of nationhood. My childhood was exactly like, like yours, except for a thousand bucks. And a nagging war I ended up loving. 
existence is very much like a monstrous hug transformed into a poem that puts memory to rest for the time being, since, as everyone knows, life is silk like root and teeth. You might as well accept that identity never intended to stay, nor ever left for good, and so each of us to its cancer, it seems. The monster has moved out. Everything I had, he robbed from the poor to give to the lions. He asks me the same question each day. Do I want or do I have? Andrea, amor prehistórico. Andrea, que escapaches do meu entendimiento e da miña memoria. Andrea, da que non recordo nada máis que unha sacudida, unha extraña sensación de beleza. Unha primeira vez tan sutil que nunca mereceu que nin eu a chamase primeira vez. Andrea, por que viñeches hoxe a miña cabeza? Xamais che dediquei tempo, non fuches excusa para justificar nada do que veu despois. Hoxe regresaches a min, estou recordándote desde os meus ollos e desde unha vista de paxaro. Porque pode a imaxe de non as dúas, a imaxe de ti soa, Andrea. Igual que o sexo nun bosque algo iluminado, non sabes se queres ser quen fai ou quen observa, aquí podo ser as dúas. Andrea, estou esforzándome por rodar unha película neste verso. As sabas brancas e o seu ruido enxordecendo o ruido da praia, eu paralizada, a miña incapacidade para seguir cho ritmo. Era salvaxe e loira, pouco máis recordo e iso é algo doloroso para unha memoria prodixiosa. Andrea, por que lle chaman a praia das gaibotas se só hai avespas? Dabache igual o meu evidente medo, o teu goce estaba por riba do meu padecemento, pero tanto tiña porque ti mesma estabas por riba del tamén. A memoria, a memoria son as abas, e o mar. Son eu trinta anos máis tarde, máis tarde perdón, nomeando o que sentín, completando a vivencia ca lectura que merece. Andrea, que bonito te movías. Literalmente inalcanzable. O teu riso enxordecía o ruido das abas que enxordecían o ruido do mar. Como conseguiches convencerme para escapar contigo a min, que me aterrorizaba a liberdade. Nunca antes se esforzou ninguén tanto en ir a un sitio. Andrea, perseguíndote a ti, estaba perseguíndome a mí mesma. Teño 38 anos e tardei 30 veráns en alcanzarte. Andrea, prehistoric love. Andrea, you escaped from my consciousness and my memory. Andrea, a shiver is all I have as a remembrance of you. A strange sense of your beauty. A first time so subtle that I didn't dare call it our first time. Andrea, why have I remembered you today? My time was never devoted to you. The thought of you never justified life afterwards. Today, you have returned to me and my eyes are seeing you now, a bird's eye view, as the image of us together is more powerful than that of you and your own, Andrea. Like sex in the dim light of the woods, not knowing if I want to be the doer or the looker. Here, I can be both. Andrea, I am trying to shoot this point in verse. The white sheets and the noise of their moving deafening the sound of the waves. Me paralyzed, my inability to keep up with your rhythm. You were wild and blonde. I hardly remember anything else, and that is painful for a memory so prodigious. Andrea, why is this beach called after the seagulls if they are only wasps? My fear was so palpable that you did, but you did not care. You put your joy first despite my suffering. It didn't matter. You yourself were more important than the pain. Memory is the sheets. It is the sea. It is me 30 years later giving a name to what I felt, making the experience complete with a reading, with the reading it deserves. Andrea, you moved so beautifully. You were literally unreachable. Your smile covered up the sounds of the sheets, deafening the sound of the sea. 
How did you convince me to run away with you? If freedom was so terrifying. No one had ever wanted to go to a place this much. Andrea, chasing you, I was chasing myself. I am 38 years old. It can me 30 summers to reach you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lucia. Thanks to you. Thanks to you. It's been a pleasure to translate your poems. Thank Thank you. you. Thank you both of you, Lucia and um, and Pilar, for these beautiful poems and for the translations. Um, we will now move on to our second um, poet from A Coruña, um, to Emma Pedreira. Um, like um, Lucia, she writes in Galician. Um, she is the author of several collections of poetry. And like several of the other poets here, she crosses over into other genres as well. Um, so she has um, also written a novel, and then she's written a novel for young people as well. Um, so um, with that, I will um, hand it over to Emma, please. Eh, hola, Cornelia. Hola a todo el mundo. Muy, muchísimas gracias por, por estas palabras. <coughs> I'm very happy to be to be here. I'm so proud to 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 read my poems in the original language, in Galician language. It's, it's a honor for me. Um, este poema se llama Voz en Río. Había hombres, una mujer, un can de basalto, un afame de ferruche, dos manos con un poema. Un río, río abaixo, un corpo, corpo adentro, una ciudad, corazón adiante. Alivo tan raizame desde los pés do esquezo a auga, e feiban o su paso puro. Son famentos de aianos coa historia do lugar luchando a bocha dos dedos. Ali son estatua e monumento acedo de sombras, son maxia de facer que pedra con pedra xermine, Son xermolo da mariña en baixo da pel, son pura fame, alí. Aquí son santa compaña, coros negros a pintar coa lingua, unha luz de xiz polos camiños. Este poema se titula Coc, eh, Olí, move as barcas como xogaba o tempo triste, con desidia de poeta bello a reunirse con coitelas por las veas, as cóxegas y e as embestidas, a flor azul que se abre desde o seme do señor Blum, deitado na auga, chove a deus dar, cuspe, quen inventó a terra. Non teño boca para tanta pena, nin costelas quietas para apnea e a herba. Algo de ovellas sí que teño, que pazo tranquila por las neguas, mientras os cans mastigan fiaños de vento, e fan que ladran o recitan un rebumbio de osos e de ondas. Eh, the train goes to Antrim. O tren camino de Antrim. Nas portas de Dublín se irá a manteiga, a pedras grises. O Happening pediu un bico da miña lingua que tiña fame de ferro e pintura branca descascada, unha moeda por pousar aquí o teu descaro. Camiño do dart, os paraugas non valen nada. O chante en brillo de moeda. A chuvia é unha cousa limítrofe entre o noso ser de peixe e o buscar no íntimo a humidade do noso sexo. Os cristais atravesan os lugares sesgados, os tisnes nas fochancas, os cans branquipretos taladran area nas praias. Muda pouco a paisaxe, só unha folla de libro, unha onza de vento, seca un disparo imaginario e cae outra milla, outro can, outro conduto, outra páxina en branco. Cada día xorde en nos un manifesto das augas. Se que arremete de su interior coa su vida e o refluxo, mentres eu fico na beira do meu propio corpo. A pel e a pel son inimigas. E o mar, esta tregua que se fai por entre as posturas do día. 
Es como si Ulises a un cuerpo de mar, a Balea que ven de sufrir una oceanización súbita a través de mares como hoyos, como si Ulises o Armazón, e Ulises un galeón merullado, no punto inconstante de las augas, como siendo o mismo, e que Ulises a Ulises elevar o su nombre y e andar perdido en las augas, fosen a mesa ma memoria. So, por la tua man me ispo. Quizá furareinas todas, como envoltas de atmosfera entran no meu corpo para iluminar o para hacerme un odisea de piel entera. Desvestida de mí, no tengo adentros, son entres, todo o do mal metido. Thank you so much. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Emma, and um, yeah, thank you, Emma and Lucia, for um, for joining us from A Coruña, um, or normally you're based in A Coruña. Um, we heard in the earlier session in the roundtable um, that the location where the um, the event Poetas de Inversos normally takes place is a cultural center on the outskirts of A Coruña. <laughs> Um, and um, that kind of made me think back to Eleanor's poem, um, which was also about the outskirts of cities. So um, not only do we have the centers of cities and the, the rivers and um, ports around which they're organized, but we also have the outskirts, which are present here in a variety of ways um, in the locations of, the, of where the poems are performed or in the poems themselves. Um, so... Um, Galicia and um, and Ireland have strong ties. They are um, both um, Celtic cultures, um, and um, we are now going to move on to the poets which are here at Cork, um, which are also here live, um, and. Um, so we're going to have three poets from Ovio. Now, o Ovio um, gets a very big thank you from us because Ovio is hosting this wonderful event. And um, they have um, offered the space in the Winter Warmer Festival to um, bring us all together and to make these events possible. Um, and um, yeah, so many, many thanks to Ovio for all the work that they have put into it and for so generously providing the physical and virtual um, space. Um, so Ovio um, is an organization that um, has a wide variety of, um, of activities. Um, Ovio has an open midnight. Um, it has um, now monthly, formerly weekly poetry events. And of course it organizes the Winter Warmer Festival and um, also is active throughout the year in the community with workshops and other kinds of poetic activities. We are going to have three poets um, which have which have a trajectory with um, with Ovio. That's Julie Gu, George Harding, and Molly Toomey. And we are going to start off with um, with Julie. So I can see from where I'm sitting, I can see the microphone. So, um, Julie, would you like to come up here? Yes, thank you, brilliant. Um, and I'll just say a few introductory words. Um, Julie is an established bilingual spoken word poet from Cork. Um, she has been um, outstanding in several slams. And um, she is also a fluent Irish speaker and is um, widely published in the Irish langu language under the name Julie Field. Um, so we have been saying earlier how port cities actually house all these different languages and how in those three port cities in particular, um, we have meetings of all sorts of different languages and cultures. Um, and um, yeah, so obviously with um, A Coruña, we've had, um, we've had poems in Galician. There's of course also the Spanish, the Castilian language spoken there. And now we have um, Cork, 
where there is the Irish language as well as um, the English language, Irish Gaelic as well as English, I should say. So Julie, over to you. And hello to all our fellow poets online. Um, we've been enjoying a smashing weekend here in Cork, uh, blown away by the readings, the poetry films, my God, to, fantastic. And just the company of all my Aubrey and family uh, in real life over the weekend has done me the world good. So I'm going to start by reading a poem um, I wrote years ago. Um, it's kind of a poem that helped me piece myself back together again, and it's called Measurements. One part sleeping, presumably dormant. One part cocooned, expected to evolve. One part decaying, letting go. One part thirsty, remind to quench. One part sad, understandable. One part grateful, should be more parts. One part sexy, should be more sex. One part spiritual, on many opinion. One part angry, understandable. One part unforgiving, learning. One part academic, learning. One part creative, one part free. One part bonkers, one part musical, one part fucking hilarious. One part honest, one part daughter, one part sister, one part mother, one part friend. One part secret, one part dark, one part neglected, one part moon, one part tidal, one part fierce, one part mindful. All parts connected, all parts equal. Ramalda, thank you. Um, so I have my uh, collection here that was just uh, published earlier in the year and uh, I'm going to read a poem from it, it's, it's, it's in Irish but I'll translate it into English. Uh, one of my brothers was five years sober last week, um, for several years, my god he was a, a broken, broken man, it's incredible that he's alive and uh, it's amazing what the body can and the mind can take and survive and he spent a long long time in various uh, rehab centres I suppose so a few years in one, in fact, but uh, I remember the first time I visited him in one of these rehab centres. Many people have been to them, but it was a fairly sobering experience, I suppose. Uh, heartbreaking, observing the people in the room, visiting family members, husbands visiting wives, fathers visiting daughters, children visiting their mothers. It was just the pain you could see on faces was, was quite disturbing. Five years later, and he's doing great, still a struggle, mental health and, and everything, but uh, very proud. So the poem is entitled Dehoxamu Yahi, uh, that means uh, detoxifying Dahi, his name is David, I call him Dahi. So come to Cornelia Vosquale and that's a chinder, I'll read Irish language. Dehoxamu Yahi. In Akalon, in the Hust, on a tail, on a tail, a shkradil. Alien to a gort of tea. Shomer Kadrov, a goon brida. Suelach of Ruma, Snakuni, Gan Hortori Nobriski. Maher Lum, a comad griner of Boshti, a faglahor of Lig. Hagen Stopper of Grahon, Perter Bjoch in a gop. Shan Vahir Sitalo. Spienta, igna school runs her fad. Brahneen she cook air, er hinin, le gra, the haurasach. Fill into her the chahir, all green ye soothe me, to raise jatig, agus air. So I'll read the translation I scribbled, literally scribbled this morning. Detoxifying day. Beside me, you're silent, in yourself, screaming. You go out for a fag. 
visiting room in Coonbera. Desperate eyes and corners without visitors or biscuits. Crooked mother kids for half an hour. The shaking stops, her voice is animated. Granny sits with them, wrecked from all of the school runs. She studies her daughter with love and doubt. You return to your chair, more settled after smoke and air. So that's that one. Um, I'm going to read one more. It's a spoken word piece I wrote uh, at the turn of the new year to try and process and make sense of the head fuck of a year with that. Um, so good. So uh, yeah, I just decided this morning to read this. I, I don't, it's not fresh in my head, so I'm going to read it. Um, I'll just call it 2021. I dare not breathe a sigh of relief. I dare not speak too loud for fear of waking last year. She doesn't sleep sound. She stirs, she jerks in a clonic frenzy. Closed eyelids twerk to the footage of 2020. Flawless vision of a nine month nightmare. A global pandemic conceived. Even Batman comes out of this a villain. His trademark mask lacks respiratory hygiene. He's allergic to cats and sneezing all over at Gaff and blue in the face and telling him cover his mouth. Okay, I made that up. But should we walk on a bit, could we? Cocooning is for the faint hearted, but not for those suffering abuse, addiction, mental illness, and poverty. Some parents of children with ASD trying to meet their sensory needs, climbing the walls, tasting the windows. Isolation's a breeze for someone like me. My food in the fridge, running shoes on my feet and a pen in my hand. Spare a thought or a penny for the people on the street or in direct provision. The old folks not in their own homes, living and dying alone. Not to mention the worry of those without income. Come in from the damp of your minds and hailstones of panic. Take shelter in the knowledge that we're all in this together. Okay, the odd head, the ball is questioning whether there's a virus at all, but I don't entertain that. I stick to the facts, stepped up to my responsibility to protect me from you and you from me. I miss my friends. It might be a new year, but it's not the end. The minks are getting their revenge as their carcasses leak new strains into the plains of Denmark. You couldn't make this shit up. Every pandemic has a silver lining, I suppose. The systematic racism in North America exposed. Trump's power implodes. For a moment, I believed there were dolphins in Venice. For a moment, isolation was bliss with you. We perfected espresso martinis and danced around the kitchen in mankinis. Okay, I made that up. Should we vote on a bit cuckoo? Collectively, together. And whether it takes six months or eight, by Christ, I'll be baiting the pints of Amish with my scuffy crew in the Chenet. I'll hug the life out of my Aunt Irene, who I've hardly seen since the shit hit the fan. But it's the first day of January, and I'll share with you my mantra that's been banging around my bones, trying to stay sane at home. Sail Sloan, Sail Sloan too, Sail Summer, Sail Suvnach. Safe, healthy, happy, calm. Avliam Fivashin. Go easy on yourself and do no harm. Bring me the mark. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Um, and we are now, I hope everything's okay with the microphone. I, we are now going to move on to um, the next poet, um, George Harding. Um, who is a poet from Cork, um, and um, he has published several collections of poetry. And one of his um, one of the themes that runs through his work is um, the environment, ecology, um, ornithology, and um, he links that with politics and with the human experience. Um, I think that also links with several of the poems that we have listened to um, on this evening. 
So, um, George, if you would like to come to the microphone. Yes, thank you. Yeah, say thanks to Cornelia and for bringing this poetry from afar and to Paul and his crew for organizing Mobile every year without fail. This is called Paranoid Blues. Time passes slowly and days seem longer, but the calendar races beyond time's clock. A new noise comes from that frightened sea. It's strange stormy hole. All that bird chirping. Are they suddenly happy? Those crashing stars, moonbeams gliding with my dreams of wolves bursting through my protecting hedges and scratching at my door before ghosting in and hounding up the stairs to pound on my naked body. Luckily, I wake in time, turn on the news, which tells me it's not over yet, it could be coming your way soon, just get used to it. This is called Calm Before a Storm, and I wrote it before COVID, and it, it's about um, appreciating the tiny songs that resonate in the silence of the countryside. I like to think I noticed my first furze bush when I was about five or six years old. Calm before a storm. In these apparent silences, when leaves are still and the sea flat as ice, songs of the earth make entrance. Thistle point thin feet of the worm are scratching among the roots of the privet, both slow movers in the slowness of time. Barn on the blinks, still. Nearby, a field mouse scuffles in the cut corn, trampling on the head of a drowsy beetle. A pod in the gorse bush explodes, unheard in the orchestra residing in the anthill beneath, government at ease in its democracy. The owl drifts down silently towards the lazy beetle, without noticing a bat flies in my window. Resting my tip. When it became a problem for to go for a quiet pint with uh, one of my pals, I became more familiar with the wine dark sea colour of the bottle of red. And instead of having an old buddy for company, my faithful friend is the infuriating of harms fruit fly. This is called fruit fly. Aha, welcome, old friend. Your hummingbird buzzing intoxicates me. Harbinger of heat. Time to remove the socks. When the bottle comes down, you prefer the red. So celebrate with me tonight a cure of sorts. Now that my cough is done. You may be safe for a while, settling on the rim. Be dazzled like a moth before the glass. As you succumb in your maiden swim. Sadly, I watch you breaststroking, backstroking, crawling through the impossible shore. Finally, I fish you out, not a drop spilled, and flick you in the fire without any guilt. Then take another sip. Odysseus comes to mind, but alas, he was sold. This one is about a beautiful place in, in the countryside by the sea, a place that has been threatened over the past few decades, and the fear is someday that the invaders will be successful. The threat. I have looked over that headland long years through the distant skyline and the chameleon sea that has shed many tales. Today, the sky was blue, blue and the sea its mirror. Out of that blue, a cloud appeared, utterly out of place, lost in this great sky, devil black to boot, and then it seemed to droop like a leaf or a bent watch from Salvador. Instantly, I thought of my camera, but like a moonbeam, it was ungraspable, impalpable as a rainbow. I kept my eye on the interloper, 
when suddenly it dropped like a bird behind the headland where the rock roots are. And there I hurried to find it. This elemental thing, debris from above, a fallen star. Out of breath, I reached the place it should be, but nothing was there, nothing strange, only waves and the sea's soft or These days, lack of housing is a big problem for young people trying to find their first home. Uh, but still, any time I come across an old field where I might have picked mushrooms as a child and witnessed it being destroyed by a JCB, it's like a stab in the heart. This is called a negative. He eased the four wheeled tank abreast of the gate of the flourishing five acre field, and engine purring, popped his shades back and gazed upon the expanse with a diminishing eye. He sighed the ragwork, thistles, burdock, surmising could he squeeze 20 units in and leave a green patch to suit the planners. He could not see what was really there, but then he could talk. It wasn't his father, a cattle dealer. Tipping the shades onto his nose, he pulled away towards the galloping, rapacious city world, oblivious to the field he left behind, wilting. And the last one is called the circle. Pope Benedict uh, the Eleventh was around during the Renaissance, and he was a, a patron of the arts. And uh, he was always looking for people to help him to do up the Sistine Chapel and places around. He heard of a young painter in town of Florence called uh, Yato. Bandani, and he wanted him to come to Rome. It's called the circle. A message came to Pope Benedict XI concerning Yato Bandani, probably from Dante Alighieri, who said, He is all the rage today. Benedict sent for a faithful emissary and said, Bring this Yato to me. Eventually, arriving in Florence, the envoy found Yato at work and worry of the stranger who requested a sign of his genius. Affronted, the artist took a pencil in his fist, deftly drew a perfectly round circle and said, take this to your excellency. Feeling ridiculed and taking umbrage, the messenger took the long road home. Back in Rome, the pontiff immediately perceived the depth of a simple sign and said, Bring this man to me, we shall dine. Thank you. Thank you so much, George. Um, listening to the um, performances or listening to the readings over um, on Zoom, um, the voices are very quiet. Um, so I don't know if maybe something can be done about that or no. <laughs> okay. Right. So um, we will um, now hear the work, some work by Molly Toomey, um, who holds an MA in creative writing from the University College Cork. Um, Molly has also um, run one of the workshops um, at the Winter Warmer Festival, I believe, this year. Um, she um, has been published in several magazines um, and in um, and has received uh, um, several prizes. Obio actually published her chapbooks, one of her chapbooks, Spoken World Southern Syllabus. And um, I just wanted to mention that because with all the projects that we've heard about today um, in the course of this afternoon and the evening, um, they all have like little presses or collaborate with magazines or find other ways of making sure that the work of the, the poets who are part of these projects um, gets out even beyond the immediate reach of the microphone. 
Um, so, yes, so let's hand it over to Molly. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and thank you so much to Paul who's coming to put up my mic. Thank you. Um, it's really, really great to be here. Thank you, Paul. Um, and thank you so much to Paul and the whole team at Obail uh, for organizing this organizing this festival and it's just fantastic to be sitting here and listening to everyone's poetry it's a real privilege um, and I really really enjoyed the work beautiful beautiful writing so thank you for sharing with us um, my first poem is called Baboog and the Baboog my poem Baboog is about the Baboog project and um, so the Baboog project aims to make a doll for each of the estimated 6,000 babies and um, that are said to have died in Ireland's former mother and baby homes um, I wrote this poem um, when I was a language teacher and so there are some words in it that are in Irish uh, and they are just body parts. So, Baboig. In class, I use you to teach Sul, Love, Kjown. They grasp for your tiny arms. The red heart I stitched on your chest they pass you around so gently, as if a tight grip might make you slip away. They stroke your sewn mouth, whispering veil. At lunch, someone you like a ladybird to give their small worries to. The aftertaste of apples cheese strings and fruit gums entering the space where i have left out a nose i don't know if that's because to make you smell the world would be unfair or that i would spend hours hovering my palm there trying to feel blood warmed air so thank you. Um, my next poem is called um, Callisto. And um, it's again, it's kind of about the mother and baby homes um, in Ireland. And um, Callisto in Greek mythology was uh, separated from her son um, and was subsequently turned into a bear. And then her son um, accidentally nearly killed her but before he did. Um, they were both turned into stars. So Callisto. The matron stuffed a rag between her lips, told her she was lucky to live. All she wanted was a pill to ease the ache of a body yanked from her skin. The twist and rip of the cord was nothing compared to being left on the streets, saying yes to the landlord who flicked a cigarette in her hair, offered her two weeks for a kiss. The kettle's constant scream was her child shrieking for milk. She saw him, him in her sleep, all salt and glisten. She longed to hold him, feel the heartbeat she carried for so long. But doors were slammed, windows gagged, and he was gone. Like a star she'd never pull from the dark. Thank you very much. Um, my next poem then is, should be here, it's called um, Series and I wrote it um, during the repeal the Eighth Amendment um, campaign in Ireland, which is the abortion rights campaign um, and Series then is of course a character from mythology and she, uh, her daughter, Project Pina, fell in love with the world of the Lord of the Underworld and she had to kind of let her daughter go. Um, and I was writing this poem and thinking about motherhood and that kind of um, sense of letting people go. So 
series. I was 16 when I felt you kick, tried hangers, scalding water, the spoke of a bicycle wheel. You shrieked, howled, wept in that tooth marked cot with mold like a claw. I told mothers at the playground I was a sitter. Postmen that my husband would be back later. At dusk, I play the video of your birth in reverse. Blood and afterbirth filling me back up. Once I left you on the steps of the church. Ran back three minutes later, convinced there were bruises like berries squished under your skin. I wanted some physical thing to hate myself for. At 12, you pierced your navel with a safety pin. My fingers itched to wring your throat, but wiped that seed of blood. Now, as I got your room for drugs, I find job specs, CVs, a photo on your dresser of us on the swings, me pushing you away and pulling you back in. Cool, thanks very much for listening. Um, I'll do another one. Um, this one, it's again, it's new enough. Um, it's called 21 Questions. Um, it's not as sad as the other ones, but it's still a little bit sad. So, um, 21 Questions. Have you ever lied to me? I ask. You reply that on our fifth date, you said a rock hit the wheel, but it was a chaffinch. You didn't turn and hand me that small flame of news, but drove into the mango and gunpowder sunset. Afraid, I'd make you pull up to check that there were no quavers stuck in its throat that if its pulse didn't react to my fingers tap dancing on its kill, kill, kill bone, I'd want to bury it under heather and moss. You thought I'd make you pray every time we drove from Lismore to Ballyno that our date would become not the boardwalk, chips, and an enemy for broken wings and blood wet feathers. I think of your ex in North Carolina, how she might have perched and looked out to raised earth, waiting for you with your newly shaved beard, hand luggage of notebooks and craft beer, only for the fast and brutal machine of my heart to catch you off guard. Thank you. I think I'll just do one more. Um, so this last poem is about yeah homelessness crisis in Ireland and it's about temporary accommodation in hotels. Um, it's called Crumbling. Crumbling. The receptionist glares at Anya's streak of snot on your sleeve. You get no welcome pack, no map of the city. Her eyes roll at your council bag of fifties. She counts them three times. 
swipes her counterfeit pen. Anya is dragging you now. Wants her animal crackers in the bottom of the case, the case that holds your life. She is crying, stomping, shrieking. You can't sign the document, Jesus Christ. The receptionist thinks you can't handle your child. You yell at her, plead with her. She doesn't know what it's like to change a nappy on the side of the road, to eat dry rice krispies for lunch, to spit blood, because you can't afford a toothbrush. All you want is a table and chairs so Anya can dip crunchy soldiers in boiled eggs. Heaters to hang damp socks on and a shower to clean city grease off your skin. A bed with fresh linen to sleep and sleep until you can't remember. The woman who held her purse a little tighter. The guard who kicked you off the steps of the church. This receptionist. Tosh, tosh, tossing. Yeah, perfect. Thank you so much for listening. And thanks again to Paul and to everyone a part of Winter Warmer Festival. And thank you to everyone for your lovely poems. Thank you. Thank you, Molly. And with this, we have come to the end of today's event and to the sequence of two events on nurturing poetry and nurturing poets in port cities. Um, a huge thank you to everyone who's participated um, by sharing their poetry, um, by participating in the roundtable and sharing their ideas of and experiences. Um, Pilar for translating um, all the technicians in the background who have made this possible. Um, Paul for all the many, many different types of um, assistance that he has um, led or, or that he has lent during the preparation for this and during the event. Um, it's been yeah, and then of course we would like to thank um, Poetry and Politics for the funding. And um, it's been an absolute pleasure. It's been two beautiful events. We've listened to amazing poetry. Um, surely all those who have been nurturing those poetries are very pleased with um, their work this evening. And um, with that, I would just like to say thanks again to everybody um, and have a wonderful afternoon or evening, depending on where you are in the world. And um, hopefully there will be a Winter Warmer Festival in person with all of us having the opportunity to come together at some point in the future soon, hopefully. Yeah, so thanks again, everybody. And um, yeah, have a beautiful afternoon.